So I have these two R1 motors. Uh, they are very, very nice motors. The cans are very nice. This is 13.5, this is a 21.5. Uh, these, I paid for the same type. The interesting thing is the 21 turn motor came in the cylinder, which is what I was expecting for all of them. Now, something interesting about the packaging. There's a piece of foam in here, and there's a little hole you can't really tell because of the light. But uh, the motor goes in there, so that protects the shaft. So the motor would go inside right in here. Uh, and then there's just a cap. And there's a bunch of plastic, uh, which is a bunch of cut-up bubble wrap. Uh, so if they're just reusing plastic, I guess this works. If their intention is to add bubble wrap, it kind of defeats the purpose if they cut the bubbles. But I have no idea. So that's all that packages the motor. Uh, now the 13.5, interestingly enough, came in this nice little case. Uh, so this case is pretty nice. Uh, it's not very thick. On one side it has this little pocket which helps keep the motor, I guess, from sliding. Uh, but this is it. Uh, case is pretty nice. Other than storing a motor, I'm not really sure what I would use this for. I'm sure there's, I, I don't know, if, if you have one of these, just let me know in the comments what you use it for. Uh, I guess I could always put a rock in it. Uh, but these are the two motors. So we have a 13.5 and a 21.5. Now, usually I would do a separate video for each, but this time I'm just going to do one video. Uh, I'm going to talk about the two. Now, uh, one of the things, the armature on the outside, so the, the can here on the outside, this is very, very nicely machined. It's actually one of the best, I would say. It's right up there with the Phantom. Uh, very nice, but the laminations, not so much. See, and then right there, so you can tell where they added laminations. Uh, and then on this other motor, you can see the same thing as well, right about there. Um, why? I have no idea why. Uh, now, both of these, something that I found interesting is the amount of epoxy. Uh, so if you look inside, see no other motor so far that I've had uh, has had so much epoxy here in the front. Now, as of the time of this video, I'm not sure how that affects heat, but at some point uh, I'm going to be running this out on the track, hopefully, and then I can see how it responds to heat. Uh, but one of the nice things, though, uh, this is really nice compared to some other motors. If you look at this plate right here in the front where the winding solder onto. This one appears to be machined. So both on the 21.5 and the 13.5, that appears to be machined instead of just stamped. Uh, usually they're stamped Hobby Wing, stamped Phantom, stamped Trinity, stamped. Uh, this one does appear to be machined and then it has the turns etched right on. Uh, so if we turn this one, see 13.5 right in here. Now the tabs on these motors, uh, they are very close to the can. They are the closest uh, to the can, so there isn't much space. Uh, I'm not sure why. But these are also perfectly flat. Well, maybe not perfect, but they're flat. Uh, many other brands will have this little meniscus or this curve in them, so that makes it easier to set the wire. Uh, well, except for the Trinity X Factor, those had the, these little crescent tabs. Uh, I always disliked them. Uh, they were just short. This just makes it easier to solder. So the Trinity slot machine has tabs like this now, but they're rounded again uh, to help you set the wire. Uh, so I guess the only negative so far is the just the laminations, the way the laminations look. Uh, and the, I don't know about the epoxy. Now, if you look at the epoxy in here carefully. See the wire goes in there that was covered in the epoxy. The epoxy does look like it cracked, but it, it's not going to affect it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, then there, so you can see how it's soldered on. Now, usually with the windings, uh, many of these motors, uh, you'll notice it's, it's a similar gauge, if not the same gauge between uh, different wires. They just generally have, it just makes it easier to wind them if they use thinner strands 
and then just strand them together so you can see the three wires that are braided together and then those are wound uh, because they, they are braided together it works similar to let's just say one winding uh, nobody's going to make a solid wind because it would be too expensive for the price probably if i had to take a guess but this is it so uh, let me go ahead and put some electrical tape right here this is what i do usually this tape is old all right and uh, i'm going to start with the uh, 13.5 Now, one of the nice things about the Hobby Wing, uh, so far it's just the Hobby Wing. Hobby Wing actually has two sensor ports. It has one down here and one up here. Uh, it just makes it nice depending on the application. Uh, let's see. So we want to do A, B, C. So this one should be C right over here. Hmm. I'm wondering how I'm going to connect the middle one no I guess that works as long as the electrical tape works and this thing doesn't clip off we will be good so I'm gonna see where it's set out of the box if it's 5.5 .5, then I'm leaving it there uh, oops let's see first I want to see the timing I keep skipping. There we go. Oh, wow. That's uh, quite a spread. So far, Phantom has had the, the best spread. So this is... 33 with a 35, 31, and 34. And let's go KV. So generally I'll go to 3, and then I'll go here, and then I'll go there. So 3, 6, and then 8. All right, so out of the box, this particular motor was set at 4.6 amps, uh, which is somewhat low. I don't think they set it for maximum performance out of the box, uh, which, which is all right. I mean, no big deal. Uh, the Trinities are generally set near their sweet spot. Uh, so that is one of the differences. So R1, you will have to play with it. Uh, but the timing's pretty low for the amps. I'll have to compare this one to the other ones uh, later on. But let me go ahead and turn the timing timing up. Uh, based on this, I probably don't have that many degrees left, really, before I hit 5.5. I'll, I'll go 5 degrees. Uh, let's see. So this one uses a 2 millimeter driver compared to the other ones. Well, here, let me remember. Uh, sometimes they use a 2 millimeter. Sometimes they use a 1.5. Oh, this is, this is hard. Uh, let's see. Let's try to loosen this up a little more. All right, so according to the end bell, this reads 45. Now, previously, out of the box, it read 40, but it actually came in at 33. So we'll see what 45 gives us. Uh, it's probably going to be the high, well, based on that spread, it's probably going to be 
high 30s with the exception of one phase that might be low 40s. All right, so that's 38 degrees still. I mean, it's not bad, but it's, it is four degrees. Could be worse. I've seen worse, oops, one too many presses. Six. That is perfect. I would leave it there. That's where I want it. Uh, so, so this is the the last test I'm going to do to this, just because it's right spot on where I want it. Uh, Five point six is very good as far as I'm concerned. Now, uh, in the future, because of rain, I mean it's it's been raining here in this area, so I can't go out. But I am planning on putting this on my drag car. Uh, just for fun, just using my 13.5s on the drag car uh, and then trying to see what G's they pull according to the GPS. Uh, but that'll have to be for a future video. Now this one, let's see, this one is set at 45 out of the box. Uh, so this one is set... Uh, now the, as far as the armature everything, it should be very similar except for the winding. So I'm going to be taking the 21.5 apart. And the reason why I'm more interested in the 21.5, to be honest, is because lately I've been using 21.5 a lot more than 13.5. But the basic construction is the same. If you remember, if you watched my slot machine videos, uh, the, the, it's the same build. Just the windings change. That is it. Now with these screws, uh, you have to be careful when you re-tighten them. And the reason why you have to be careful when you re-tighten these is because you do not want to overstretch them. They're very thin, very long screws. Uh, they do stretch. That's what makes these little screws and, and bolts uh, tighten up. But if you overdo it and you go beyond the yield point, well, you kind of damage the bolt or the screw in this case. Now this appears to be a three piece, one, two, three, uh, but we'll see. All right, wow, it's even nice on the inside. Uh, so here we go, that's what this looks like. Very nice construction. Uh, let's see, let's look at the other one. Okay, well, this is the front. Nice machine work as well. Uh, let's see, shims, and only use this one in the rear. Oh, the front, these. Ah, that's a totally different way of shimming. Uh, all right, so this is the first time. Oh, it is one shim. Hmm, I wonder why they do it this way. Uh, and then the other two. All right. So maybe they just spent a little more time shimming, that's why. Most motors, they generally just have one brass shim here. Uh, so if you remember the Trinity, uh, the Hobby Wing, or even the Phantom, I think only had one shim there. Uh, this is interesting. Now the rotors, they're all going to be about the same size uh, if I were to compare them. Uh, but I'm going to measure just, just for fun. All right. All right, so about 24, oops, that was just over 24. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, if they're spec motors, they, they should all be approximately the same size. Now, I'm going to see how KV was affected. Uh, 
uh, KB is the same, so it's 2417, 2417, that's the exact amount I uh, this read last time, uh, as well as the amperage, the only difference is the RPM 18857 versus 18860. So as far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing. I really didn't do uh, anything to change it or improve it, even if I did get uh, those timing numbers closer. So right now I do have to bump up the timing and uh, the thing that I'm worried about though is uh, based on the amps I need to bump it up at least 5 degrees but I can't go 5 degrees because then one of my faces could potentially be at 60. Uh, so we will see. I'll place this so the arrow is just below 50. Now something else that can and does affect timing is the position of this. This can actually shift left and right. That's something else to keep in mind. Let's see. All right, so we'll do motor timing first, see if it's within phase. Timing's at 57. Wow. All right. Yeah, definitely don't want to go any higher. 50 because we have a 60. 60 is the most you want to go. Uh, all right. So that is at peak timing. Let's see. KVs. That's as high as I'm going to go in timing. I still cannot hit that uh, 5 amps, uh, so this is at 4.6. Uh, so we'll see what the KV is then compared to the other ones based on paper like I mentioned. Uh, maybe it'll matter, maybe it will not. Uh, but a motor like this will probably run cool for days uh, just because it's drawing so little amperage. Uh, moving on to this, so I've decided to change to amps because amps I find more important than timing to a degree. Uh, but normally I would do several degrees and then move on. But the reality is, I mean, no one really is going to run a motor at 2.6 amps unless the individual just wants to run it for days. And to be honest, if that's the goal, then there would be no point in running a 13.5, just run a 21.5. Uh, battery will last longer at lower amps. Yes, it'll be slower as well, but that's a trade-off, right? If runtime is more important. Uh, but here, I'm gonna look for something very, very similar. Now keep in mind that the voltage is different. Uh, so this uh, generally can produce a, a different result. The interesting thing is that if uh, when I compared the Phantom, it really didn't make much difference because I compared it in two volts. So if you've seen that video, the I know I'm pointing at the Hobby Wing, uh, the Phantom I did I 21.5, it uh, voltage change didn't really affect KV, which it shouldn't because KV is a constant. If voltage affected KV, then KV wouldn't be a constant, but. In, with some other motors, it, it does make a difference. So we're going to look at 4.6 versus 4.8. This is the closest amperage that I have. Uh, and there's a massive KV difference between the Trinity slot machine uh, and the R1. Why? Uh, I don't know. That's very interesting because these are, this is a spec motor. The rotors should be very, very similar. Should be. Now, if we look at this 3.8, notice that even at lower amps, the Trinity slot machine has more KV than the R1 at 5.6, which is an interesting result. If I had to compare the R1 motor uh, based on amperage and KV, I would actually be closer. Nope, no, nothing. Well, here, let's see, what about 
but uh, no, there is absolutely, well, here, this is, I guess, a little closer, but this is uh, when I was trying different rotors, so if you want to see those videos, uh, without, I do not have something to measure Gauss with right at this time, but that's the only thing I can think about, which doesn't make sense, because they're supposed to be spec, uh, spec motors, uh, so it would have to be the can. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you have two rotors that are exactly the same and then one motor is yielding less KV, it's generally because of a less efficient can. So not sure what's going on there. But this is the 21.5, just based on KV compared to amps, this is what we have here. Uh, the slot machine is definitely going to yield uh, more KV right here if we compare this. Uh, if we go over to 5.3, uh, it's still a lot more than this one drawing 5.6. And then if I go to the Hobby Wing, 5.1 amps, so less amps, and it's more KV. It's just over 200 KV more for 0.5, so for half an amp less on the Hobby Wing. Uh, so just to compare this to this, we're looking at 5.6 amp draw versus the Hobby Wing will do it in 3.2 amps. Uh, if I found something similar, such as this, we're almost two amps less uh, in the slot machine. So slot machine and hobby wing, very, very similar motors. Uh, they seem to turn out far more KVs than the R1. Uh, but again, I cannot test the rotor at this time. Uh, still waiting on my uh, Gauss tester, so we'll see when that comes in. Uh, but now I'm going to go ahead and look at the 21.5s and see how the 21.5s uh, stand. So Phantom Helix, uh, this is the motor that I currently have installed in my USGT. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, we are, uh, well, it's, it's been raining. So I'm not going to be going out in quite a while. So unfortunately, I won't have an update uh, for a bit. But here, this is what I have it set at so 5.5 amps my 21.5 my r1 i cannot get it above this amount because i'm already at 60 degrees for one of the channel then it'll be off uh cannot go above 60 degrees so here i'm stuck this is the most i can do so this is a 57 versus a 49 and if we look at kvs i'm looking at uh 2,952 KVs versus 2,529 KVs. Uh, if I went based on amps, the closest thing that I have is this 5.2. But even then, uh, 3.4, this is yielding 2,600, almost, almost 700, almost 2,700, which is more than this one at this amount. Uh, so again, not sure what is happening there. And if I look at these numbers, let's see, 4.6, 25. This is actually running closer to, let's look at the track star. Uh, track star 2.6, uh, well, let's see, 24 at 5.2, 24 at 5.2, 24. Uh, yeah, the R1 actually perform, performs similar to the Trackstar. Well, no, no, it performs better than a Trackstar. Trackstar is the worst uh, out of these. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I don't have a 17.5 or else I could compare it to the Eco Power. Uh, but uh, the R1 is definitely lower in KV compared to all of the other motors. Uh, as I said, this is the one I currently have in my USGT car. This one's f this one I had for a while. Uh, actually, I'm using this one in my TC, and I prefer the way this one responds in my TC compared to this one in the TC, but it does fine in the USGT car. Uh, but this is the one that is next to be fully tracked. Uh, and then hopefully I can get a series in and have an update uh, at least a few actual races with times. Uh, but here, as far as the R1, and this is the S version, uh, this is what I have right now as far as amps and uh, 2529, this is what we have in here. Uh, so the R1 definitely underperforms as far as KV relative to amperage. Then again, 
uh, that I would say this is an incomplete test until the motor is put in an actual car and then run, which is something that I plan on updating in the near future once it doesn't rain so I can actually put the motors in the cars and then just run them. At least do a little, you know, drag race, uh, get some GPS numbers in there as well. But for now, this is what I have. Uh, I hope this is useful information, uh, or at least entertaining information. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,